All right, babies. It's that time again. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> we are in Luke 2. <clears throat> I don't know how this was determined, but some scholars I recently came across <clears throat> think that Luke and Acts were written by a woman. I don't know how they came up with that, but there you have it. <clears throat> Investigate that. If that's the case, that would be remarkable because we know that for the most part, men lived privileged lives with access to education and such. So I don't know how a woman would learn to write Greek at the time of Jesus. But that's what they say. <clears throat> Some say. So in Luke 2, uh, this is, uh, I'm not really a big uh, fan of the whole chapter. I'll tell you why. Well, one thing is that it is largely considered a late addition to the book. Um, in other words, chapter 3 sounds more like an original beginning. And chapters 1 and 2 appear to be more added at a later date to give some background and contextual understanding of the events to follow. So that's kind of a minor piece so it might but it does get me wondering uh, get the the main thing of it that I can't really resonate with is um, that it it sounds yeah basically it actually kind of this is a similar thing. Um, it reads to me like something that was written um, after the experience of Jesus's ascendant ascendancy to heaven and appearing to various disciples and transforming people's lives by their simple act of faith of receiving his message. But I think there was an attempt to um, put together the missing pieces in his life in order to tell the story as a whole. In other words, there were no eyewitnesses to Luke 2. Um, and so where all of that came from, who knows? But it just reads to me like someone is trying to say, okay, we know Jesus is the Messiah. We know he uh, established a new kingdom in the heavens. So let's create a full story that starts from his birth. That's what it sounds like to me. I could be wrong. And the other piece that's making me uh, a little suspect of it is the 
use of the term Holy Spirit is in the chapter. And the Holy Spirit wasn't given until the day of Pentecost. So after Jesus is raised and takes his rightful place for all eternity in heaven, then he unleashes his spirit to those who are asking. So in Luke, for various people to say they were moved by the Holy Spirit, I, I don't buy that. Maybe God ordained, you know, put together some chain of events, possibly. But to call it the Holy Spirit, that's that's a little off, I think. Um, not a, again, not a big issue, but I just think it's a little off. Uh, what else is in there? You know. Uh, The whole piece about, you know, it was the, uh, they, were do, may, they were doing a census. So people had to return to their hometown to be counted. That seems a little odd. And that that would be the time that, you know, Mary gives birth seems strange to me like why is that there is it just so that Jesus avoids you know Herod murdering every infant in order to try and destroy the possible coming of a Messiah I mean it just it just sounds all too far-fetched to me um also, the the, uh, the angels uh, appearing to. Uh, I'm just realizing I'm going the wrong way. Uh, is there anything in here? No. Um, the angels appearing to the shepherds and telling them. Well, you'll know it's the Messiah when you find a baby in a manger. Okay. So, <laughs> so they're just going to go looking in, main, in in various mangers until they find a baby? I mean, what was that all about? <laughs> you know, there's no description of following a star, you know, or anything like that. So that's... Right? That's odd um, and concerning. <laughs> what else? Um, then you have like, you know, coincidentally, you have like a prophetess who happens to be, you know, they say there's an older prophetess who's always in the temple and Somehow she, you know, her acknowledgement of Jesus is supposed to uh, confirm his, his birth as meaningful. They kind of don't even really describe it. To me, that also sounds odd and just sort of added in as extra flavor. And then the the guy who I think circumcises Jesus also, you know, somehow figures out that Jesus is going to be a central figure for all history. Mm, don't really buy that either. Because to me, it's not until Jesus, uh, like it says, he grows in wisdom as a child. He grows in wisdom and then he eventually, you know, he's teaching in the temple. He says, why were you looking for me, you, you know, after a day? Again, they're going to miss Jesus for a day and then discover he's not with them. 
that seems strange too. And he's like, why wouldn't you know I'd be about my father's business? And they're like, they didn't know what he meant by that. And that's it, that's the end of the story. None of it makes much sense to me. It all sounds very mythological and created. Um, thankfully, we can say, Jesus, thank you for coming into the world. And yes, reveal yourself to me that I might benefit from what you've created for all of us, which is access to your beauty. Yes, thank you. That we will have evidence for. If you do that, you'll see what I mean. The rest of this, I don't think so. <laughs>